at the festations. That's where we were. As I look back across these images, the faces that look out score lines across my skin. Together the distance collapses in waves. We sat together side by side, thigh to thigh. The bus pulled away. The mountain shudders and swings around us. I said, I heard once of a shrine here that has been destroyed and rebuilt every 20 years for the last 1,000. And she turned to me and said, When we look at the mountain, it becomes flat. There's a sum of lines that point upward. Someone told me, I forget who said it first, that Mount Fuji can be seen from everywhere in Japan. It is the backcloth to an endless series of tableaux. I held the camera to the window. The forest glances. A flat blur marks the press of a finger. She said, It is said that it belongs in every horizon, never out of view. It has no fixed geography, she said. It is there in everything. Or, at least, everything is in it. She said, Did you know the word syntax refers to a series of geological folds that converge to a single point? I had never seen it, I said. Even in the midst of the Alps, the Matterhorn only emerged from the mist in flashes, once almost whole at the moment of departure. There, a stiffness in my knee. My thumbs rub it out, stroke by stroke. As she turns to me, her gaze makes a hollow in my cheeks for blood to pool in. I rub it out, stroke by stroke. It hardly matters what mountain it is, she said, as long as it points up. The little yellow tents found in suicide forest near the mountain point upwards too. Their flimsy canvas skin as flat as the mountains. The summit is clear now. Its yellow peak cuts through the coal. From the forest floor, I caught this nightjar stretching its limbs. Past her face, the white and blue curtains are yellowing at the corners, mossy with fingerprints, sung like glances of the synthetic fibres. The chairs and headcloths glisten. Her yellow eyes cut through the cold. We sat together, side by side, thigh to thigh. Past the snow, she said. Past the snow is where you can see the footprints of the pilgrims. We put layers over them, she said. The soles of our bare feet make delicate marks in the mud. Through them, time is transparent. We are the feet of everyone. Under my socks, I feel the hot curl of your toes. Turning to me, she asked, Why does the body remember only in fragments? A pilgrimage to Suicide Forest is unlike another. Transparent, bare feet, soles on soles, hot, curling like ours. But footsteps followed here do not affect a return in the sense of the impulse as we know it. The workers carry the body through the forest to this station where they are catalogued, photographed. I've heard they play rock, paper, scissors to decide who will sleep with the body. These pilgrims, these who choose the forest as their resting place, Curate their own site of mourning, a hidden decay, a destination in suspense. They bury themselves while those left outside the forests are delayed in mourning, robbed of an, robbed of an emotion corresponding to its proper time. The registers of loss are disconnected. Their status as ghosts is put on hold. Their bodies rest heavy, light unburdened by our grief while time unfolds two narratives of uncertainty, of uncurbed longing. We sat together side by side, thigh to thigh. Together the distance collapses in waves. My breath is tight, the space in between. Light lays across my lap. I can't... I can't remember what I said as I saw it pass from mine to yours. I stumbled as the sun rubbed us out stroke by stroke. As mine cooled, I felt yours warm. Her gaze made a hollow for blood to pool in. Photographs, unlike other moments, are left uncompleted by their passing to the next. Arrested in their flow, they hang. Their subject moves on as they cannot. Haunting, buried alive, exhausted in the act of continual presence. We know, knowing they are orphaned, hold them in our hands too shy to admit to our tenderness.